All right, this is just going to be a quick video running you through number five in your notes. Okay, it says a point zero three, a point zero zero three zero zero gram sample of naphthalene, a compound containing only carbon and hydrogen, was burned in excess oxygen <clears throat> to give 0 0.0103 grams of carbon dioxide. Determine the empirical formula of naphthalene. The formula weight of naphthalene is 128 units. Determine the molecular formula. So as you can see, um, I'm just setting up the problem so we can see the reaction. Um, I have labeled that we have oxygen in excess. I've also go ahead, I've gone ahead to label how much of each of the two, the reactant and the product that I have. Um, this is going to be important for us. So since everything is given to me in grams, we have to figure out how much carbon we have in grams and how much hydrogen we have in grams. We're not going to really worry about the oxygen because it is an excess. It is not the one that drives the reaction. So what we're going to do is we're going to focus in on the fact that carbon dioxide, we know we have 0 0.0103 grams, and we can figure out how much carbon is in that. So, continuing on. <clears throat> Once again, just because of the grams. Um, and what we, we're going to see later is we're going to be able to take the total minus our carbon to figure out our hydrogen. All right, so setting up our railroad tracks. We've got our mass of carbon dioxide. We know that for every one mole of carbon dioxide it is 44.01 grams of carbon dioxide. Then I'm going to bring the mole of carbon dioxide down and I know up here we know that for every one mole of carbon dioxide there is one mole carbon. So there's one carbon atom in every single carbon dioxide molecule. Okay. Now I'm going to bring one mole of carbon down and I'm going to go ahead and put it back into grams. So 12.01 grams according to the periodic table. When you plug that into your calculator, you're going to get 2.81 times 10 to the negative 3 grams. <clears throat> I chose to not deal with a bunch of zeros um, and I was following my three sig fig rule. That's usually given to us in our mass. Remember, you never include your moles, you never include your molar masses. Those, um, those tend to have more, and also your moles are your exact numbers. So now, as you can see, we're taking the total minus my carbon to find out how much hydrogen we have. So now that's where this piece of information is coming in to play. So we're gonna go ahead and find that we have 1.89 times 10 to the negative 4 grams of hydrogen. So that takes us to our next step. Now we're going to be putting everything into moles. If you were given this information, you can go straight to the moles. Okay? And this is, this is actually where we usually start off. Okay. So, converting into moles, I went ahead and took out the 1 mole for the molar mass. So I just divided by my molar mass, but if you notice my units, I am still canceling out my grams, I'm left with moles. Um, so I'm going to do that with carbon, and now I'm gonna go ahead and do that with hydrogen. Okay, and so as you can see, dividing each one by its molar mass, we found carbon to be 2.34 times 10 to the negative 4 moles, and we're going to find that hydrogen is 9.36 times 10 to the negative 5 moles. Okay, we're going to go ahead and look for our smallest number out of the two, which is the 9.36 times 10 to the negative 5, so our hydrogen. We're going to divide each one by that to find our, our ratio. <clears throat> This is how we're starting to get our empirical formula with this step right here. So dividing each one by 9.36 times 10 to the negative fifth. Hydrogen is going to be 1, but when you plug in the other, you're going to get carbon to be 2.5. Like I said, hydrogen 1. So we know we need to double it in order to get rid of the 2.5. So our empirical formula is going to be C5H2. 
Now they also want us to turn around and find molecular formula. So what we're going to do is we're going to get the molar mass of C5H2 using our periodic table and we get that to be 62.07 grams. Given to you in the problem, they said that we had 128 grams of this stuff, this naphthalene. So when you look here, we can see that it is um, a ratio that it needs to be doubled in order to reach somewhere around 128. <clears throat> so as you can see, now we're going to take our empirical formula and multiply it by 2. So our molecular formula, or how it appears in nature, is going to be C10 H4. And that is how you work these types of problems. So go ahead and do homework 1F number 6.